English is okay? Anybody does not speak English? I'll repeat it later in a different language. We'll start with English. Hope you don't mind. I can't read me the shaykh, but I have a pot saying in the back, but I have made it on a voice phone. We'll read it in Yiddish, in English. Anyway, we need a little background music over here while I'm telling the story. Many, many years ago. He does it good, no? And so. Very good. And so many, many years ago, when the Yidden lived in a country called the Soviet Union, where it was very, very cold. It was freezing cold. You had to wear 45 undershirts. And that was in the summertime. And it was mama so cold when somebody said, hello, how are you? The words froze in the middle of the air. He said, Baruch Hashem, very well. He had to take out a chisel and chisel the words down. I walk over and say, hello, how are you? Thank you. Oh, it's cold now. Oh. Wow. And the Soviet Union was a very, very chilly place to be. Give you a chili pepper? Soviet Union, that's all they ate, chili pepper. It was freezing. And so one day, now in the Soviet Union, they didn't have a big crowd like this at Malava Malka. If they would have a big crowd like this at Malava Malka, the police would come immediately and say, who's here? Everybody would hide under the table. And a little boy Yankee would say, there's no one here now. Where is everybody? They left already. The story's over. They ate the Kegels and Avega Gangen. Don't do this again, otherwise we lock you all up. <laughs> Who did this? My friend. You want to go to Sibir? He wants to go. And so Soviet Union was a very, very not hospitable place. They didn't have one hospitable. If you didn't feel good, there was no place to go. And so what did they do to learn Torah? There was no yeshiva in the Soviet Union. At least not a big yeshiva. Not even a medium-sized yeshiva. Even a tinshi winchi yeshiva they didn't have. So how did they learn Torah? I'll tell you in a second. They used to sneak out of the house at 5 o'clock in the morning. It was so cold, the wind was blowing. And Yankee and Moshe walked out of the house, and the wind was blowing. And Moshe said, Yankee, the wind is blowing. What should I do? Blow back. He said, you blew my head off. I almost blew your head off, but anyway. And he said, hold, hold on to me, it's very cold. Why should look? Yankee, what? Do you see what I see? No, what do you see? I see what you see. Oh, I don't see anything. Neither do I. Now look. There's a policeman marching around with a big rifle. What are we going to do if he aims the rifle at us? If he sees us with a small chumash, he's going to aim that rifle. What are you going to do? I will pick up the rifle. No, you can't do that. Then I'll put the rifle down. You can't do it. You don't know what you're talking about. Shh. Let's walk very, very slowly. Don't make a drop of noise. There's the cheder over there. And there was a little window in, underneath one of the buildings. They had a small cheder, and there was a rebbe with a big, tremendous, he had a big chumash with him, weighed 632 pounds. That was only the cover. And he took this chumash, and he knew this was the only chumash that he had, and the boys had a little small chumash with them. And that's all he would need was if the police would see him, that was the end of him, he would be sent off to Siberia for 1,332 years and four days. What's up is four days? to pack up and you want to come back. It takes a little time. And so they were very, very afraid. They were nervous. Just the police should not see them. And there the policeman was walking around. And one of the other men said, Boris, what is it? What you want? You see those two boys? There. The one that's being blown away with the wind and the other one's holding on to his foot. You see them? Oh yeah, that is funny, his shoe flew off. 
I think those two boys are going to the Jewish school where they learn Torah. You know Torah? I don't know him. Well, this is, you can't do that. It's against the rules. Against the rubles? Against the rules. Watch them very carefully. Make sure you have your gun with you, your rifle. Thank you. <laughs> and so the two, the two soldiers, the two policemen start walking closer and closer. And there's Moshe and Yankee going to the school. And Yankee says, Moshe, shh, do it, just blow me, blow me away. I'll come after you later. Hold on to the pole. See that pole? I can't, they're blowing, it's blowing the pole away. Hold on to the house. It's blowing the house away. Finally, they both get together and they're walking towards that little yeshiva, that small cheder, which is on the bottom of the house, where they're already sitting there with the bichumish. And the soldier's watching. Ah, I think, I see so, I see them going down there. Now, you couldn't just go down to the cheder. Anybody that was caught going down to the cheder, that was the end of him. You wouldn't see him for, I don't know how many years. And so they, Moshe said, Yanki, my hands are frozen. I forgot to put my gloves on. Hey, I'll give you my gloves. How many gloves do you have? 400 gloves I have all over the place. You can put a pair of my socks on also. Come quickly, the soldiers. I think he saw us. The only way to get downstairs was to go around the side of the building. And there was a little doorway, you had a knock on the door. And the door would open. Look, the stairway. What happened to it? I don't know, it's gone. That's because you knocked on the wrong door. That door is where they throw the laundry down. There is the door, oh. And the door opens up very slowly. And there's the stairway going downstairs. And both boys, they take this mocha motion lach. And he says, do you think the soldier saw us, Yankee? I don't think so, but maybe. And what's gonna happen? Don't worry, Moish. If they send you to Siberia, I'll write you letters every day. I don't want you to write me letters, I'm afraid. Hold on to my hand. And he grabs onto his glove and he starts walking, he starts walking down the stairs. Yankee is leading in front of Moishe's in back. And when he walks down the first stairs, stairway, he takes a look. Moishe, are you with me? Are you? Moishe, it's your glove. But where are you? He looks up on the top of the stairway. I'm right over here. Come down! What's the matter with you? Shh, don't, don't make a lot of noise when you walk down. We don't want them to hear us. And he starts walking down the steps. I said, don't make a lot of noise. That wasn't a lot of noise. I can make a lot more noise. You mean, well, stop that. I know you can make noise. Now walk down quietly. What happened? My foot started. My right foot went into space where my left foot is supposed to be and my left foot went backwards. Come downstairs and finally they get to the bottom and there's the Rebbe waiting for them. And he has that big chumish with him. And they, they knock, they have to knock three times. That's the signal. Knock again. Knock again. No! Now he's gonna think with the police. Good. I always wanted to be a policeman. Come, come with me. And the Rebbe opens up the door. Now luckily this door, there was a door on the bottom. And there was a door on top just in case somebody was trying to sneak in. And he opened up the top door. And the Rebbe, he had his wonderful long beard. Maybe two blocks long. And he said, he was so afraid, just maybe the police had noticed that the boys were going in the back of the house down to the cheder with his small commotion. And he looked out the door. The bottom of the door was closed. The top of the door was open. He said, is anyone there? And my, she said, Yankee is there. Oi! He closes the door. Oi. Meanwhile, the bottom of the door opens up. 
Both boys sneak in. He opens up the top of the door. Is anybody there? From the back, he says, hello, Rebbe. We snuck in through the bottom. Quickly, get around the table. Please, this week, this week is a very important date. It's the yard site of the Rambam. I have to tell you about the Rambam. And the Lianki says, do you know him personally? <laughs> no. The Rambam lived 800, almost 900 years ago. Oh, you were a little boy then, Rebbe? No. You, were you a big boy? No, I'm, the Rambam was a great man. He wrote many, many big sparring. Big ones? Like, like the Chumash that you had? Almost? And today we're going to learn a little bit about him. Suddenly, through the little window on the side, they could see the boots of the policeman walking around. Are you, are you all right? Yeah. He has a cold, he has a flu. He's flowing around all over. And he says, oh, Rebbe, Rebbe. Goes over to the Rebbe and the Rebbe has only one big chumash and the little boys have their small chumash lach. That's all they need, that the policemen should see them? No, that, 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 that's it. And they see the big boots of the policemen by the window. And Maishi says, Maishi, like a little boy, Yankee's a little bigger. Maishi says, look, somebody left his boots outside. <laughs> no, that's not just boots. There's something inside those boots. A pair of socks. <laughs> no, there's a policeman in there. <laughs> and you can take them off if you want. Shh, stop talking. The Rebbe says, boys, there's maybe five, eight boys in the class. Everybody, shh, don't make a sound. Hide under the table. Some boys go quietly into the closet. I'll go on the side over here where the big desk is. And we'll make believe there's no one here. Suddenly they hear the footsteps of the soldiers walking down the stairs. <coughs> Yankee gets up. He makes a lot of noise, you know? Oh, Yankee, get away from there. And the Rebbe says, boys, get under the desk, under the... Hi, quickly. Oh, we left the Chumashim out. He's going to see it. We're finished. Yankee says, don't worry, I'll put them away. <laughs> He's going to see you. Hello. I'll wave back to him. No, we're all gonna end up in Siberia. You promise? No, Siberia is terrible. You can't. Quickly, forget the commotion. Hide under the chair. Okay. He hides under the chair, and suddenly they hear by the door the heavy footsteps. Oh no. He knows we're here. What are we gonna do now? They're gonna catch us looting Toro, we're finished. And Yankee says, boy, those boots make a lot of noise. And he hears a knock on the door. Open up this door. I don't want to. Don't say that. I do want to. Yankee, go away, go away, go under the table. I read he went under the table. How long do I have to stay under there? Till he goes away, please. And Yankee gets up. He's only four years old, five years old. He says, my Rebbe said you should go away. And suddenly he hears, again, the door is being knocked on. <coughs> Open up this door, Knau. Knau, don't you speak Russian? What's wrong with you? And he says, I don't want to open a door canal. <laughs> Yankee says, Moish, Moish says, Yankee, 
Don't you understand? If they come in here, we're finished. Go away from the door. Okay, I, I got a great idea. What are you gonna do? Shh. He pulls out of his pocket something that he always keeps, his mother always gives him, just in case he gets into trouble. A string that you tie around your finger. Why you do that, nobody knows. His mother says, in case you're in trouble and you forget where you are, tie the string around your finger. And what'll happen then? You'll know where your finger is. <laughs> so he takes the string out and he goes over to the door and by the door there are two like nails sticking out. So he ties a string around one nail. Then he takes it over to the other string, ties it around the other nail. And the soldier says, you don't open now the door, we break in the door. Ha ha, let's say you do it. <laughs> and we come running in, we arrest everybody. Ah ha, I wanna see you try it. And the poor Rebbe is so shivering. Oh, why did I let him into this class? He's not, he's a little baby, he doesn't know what's going, he's only making trouble. And now every, Rebbe says, okay, everybody, please go into the closets and let's all say to him, let's hope that they don't cop us, they don't catch us. Remember, Shia Malais, Imamad. And Yaki says, what's the matter? Everything's going to be all right. Suddenly the door, they hear the door slamming. Wow. That's a door. And he hears again. The soldiers are pushing the door in. Finally, one of the soldiers says, I will pull the door or off the hinges. He takes out a screwdriver from his pocket. Pulls the whole door off. A Yankee standing over there. <laughs> Could you put that back? Let's go! They run into the room. They forgot that Yankee put his string by the door. The first soldier says, I'm up! He falls on the floor. The next soldier runs in. He falls on top of him. Five soldiers all fall on top of each other. And they're all fighting with each other. Get off of my back. What is wrong with you? And Yankee says, ya -da -da, ya -da -da. They finally get up. He's just too young to understand what's going on. He says, uh, where is everybody else? They went home. I think someone is in that closet, yes? Someone is in that closet, no. I will check. He opens up the door. One of the boys is there. He has a big coat on top of him. Ha! Is that you? No. Somebody else. Ah! With the Hebrew books, yes! He takes all the chomoshim. Oh, we put this away for evidence. Puts it on the side. And he says, now take this little boy. Come with us, yes? <laughs> we take you to headquarters. I don't want to go to nobody's headquarters. I don't even want to go to a half a dollar on his head. Take this boy right now. We show you what the Soviet Union can do to you, you little boy. Oh yeah, I'll show you what I can do to the Soviet Union. <laughs> Poor little Yankee. He doesn't know what he's talking. He doesn't realize. And so he grabs hold of his jacket and pulls him out. <laughs> Where is this boy? I have a jacket here. And the others, all the soldiers are laughing. Ha, ha, ha. He pulls the jacket. The kid is still on the floor. I don't. <laughs> Finally, they get hold of Yankee. They take him, they schlep him out. All the hidden in the whole neighborhood. They heard that the soldiers had found out where the cheder was. And little Yankee was not such a bright kid. They got him. And the father says, where's Yankee? I knew I shouldn't have let him go, but he wanted to learn Torah so much I couldn't stop him. He kept hanging on to his brothers. 
on the shirt the whole time. I couldn't stop it. What am I going to do now? And he sees these five big soldiers are walking with one little Yankee. They're holding him up. <laughs> Yankee, what's happening? Hi, Pa. I'm going with these people. Oh, no, don't take him. Take me. No, I want to go. You don't understand. They're going to take you away. Maybe I'll never see you again. Really? No, no, please don't. And Yankee's mother comes out. She's crying. Oh, no, my son. She has a big towel. She's mommy. Oh, no, she's squeezing out of Niagara Falls. Oh, no, what's it going to be? What are you doing? And the soldier says, Peter Sari, this boy come with us. He was doing a mitzvah, learning Torah. <laughs> We don't let this happen here in, in the Soviet Union, where it is the paradise, the happiest place in the world, yes? And the father says, hey, yeah, so happy here. But please let my son go. He doesn't know any better. I'll never let him do it again. The soldier takes Yankee to the back. He tells the other soldiers, you will wait here, here. I will deal with this troublemaker. Come with me. Takes him to the back of the room, uh, in the backyard, and Yankee's father says, oh, "What's gonna be, Marshy? What's gonna happen?" I don't know. That soldier looks pretty mean to me. He has this big giant rifle, and all the hidden are standing around. The ones who didn't want to admit they were Jewish, a lot of them, a lot of them are looking out the window. One lady opens up the window. Well, you go away from here. What are you doing in the backyard? Go inside, lady, I'll take care of this here. And Yankee says, hi, Mrs. Schlankowitz, how are you? Quiet. Now nah, I will have to shoot. You don't have to. Stand over there. Over here, over there. Bye-bye. Wait. I said, stand over there. I already stood over there, and I'm going home. Stand over there. I have this big rifle. Oh, how nice. You know what I could do with this rifle? Um. You make jokes with the famous soldier from the, so the police chief from the Soviet Union. I will have to deal with you. Stand over there to teach them a lesson. And Yankee moves over. Nah, you are so scared, right? Wrong. <laughs> You're not scared? Not of you. You're a little like a small cockroach. But you're like a big gorilla. <laughs> My Rebbe told me I'm not supposed to be scared of anybody, only Hashem. What is this? Hashem watches over the whole world. Yeah, even me, even you. That's so nice. I'm not afraid, only of Hashem. Whoa, watch this. He takes the gun. I will count to three. You better say your blessings. Okay, Shema Yisrael. What is this? One of my blessings. One, two, and the lady upstairs opens the window again. Will you get away from here? Close that window, Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Schlackowitz, how are you? Close the window. And three, and he aims the gun, big rifle, with a big bullet inside, and the little Yankee. <laughs> not afraid, as Rebbe said, only he's supposed to be afraid of Hashem, nobody else. He aims the rifle right at Yankee, and instead of shooting Yankee, he lifts up the rifle, he shoots up in the air. Mrs. Schlockwitz's laundry comes flying down. She opens the window again, I told you not to do that. All my pajamas are all over the place. And meanwhile, Yankee has a big pajama top on top of him. 
<laughs> Boy, you have terrible aim, you know that? You should go back to the baby league. You should shoot a bow and arrow on Lon Bomer. That's about all you're good for. And the soldier says, the policeman says, come over here, you little boy. What do you want now? He reaches into his pocket and he pulls out all torn and yellow, a little chumash. Hey, give that back to me. No, this one is mine. You? Why? You want to come learn the Kaida? When I was a little boy, maybe I was only four or five years old. That's how old I am. And they came, the soldiers came to me. And I was sitting, I was going to a little Jewish school with the rabbi with the long gigantic beard. And the soldier, he grabbed me. He grabbed you, why don't you bite his finger? I wasn't as smart as you are. And he took me and grabbed me and put, him, put me on his horse and rode away. Really? That sounds exciting. I never ever saw my mommy and daddy ever again, Papa. And Bobby and Zadie and nobody else. But I kept my little chumash in my pocket. Maybe one day I will meet a Jewish boy. And who's learning chumash? Here, you can keep this. No, you can have it. No, I will not use this anymore. It is yours. I got one already. My Rebbe has one away, 643 and a half pounds. That's only to cover. Why don't you come with us? You could become a from Yid. I don't know if I could do this anymore. Goodbye. Don't tell anyone I let you go. And this, the policeman turned around and walked out to where the other policemen were waiting for him. Well, you shot this boy, huh? You are so brave. You are a nut numbskull. Thank you. You think I will shoot a little boy? Come with me, we go back. Don't tell anybody. You'd let him go? Shh, quiet. Don't tell anybody, don't tell the chief of police what I did. Come with me, we have to go somewhere. He grabs the other policeman. Come you too, come on, he grabs all of them, let's go. They go away. And the little boy comes back around and his father heard the shot. He stood there crying, no, no, what did they do, my little boy, Yankee? Yankee comes out. Hello, Papa. <laughs> Oi, they shot him. Papa, they missed. <laughs> pa uh, Oi. And the mother's crying. Oi, my, my, was such a good boy, the best boy I've ever had. My, she says, what about me? Eh, uh, you're pretty good too. And Yankee says, Papa, it's me. No, no, they shot you. I won't ever see you again. You're gonna see me again. They missed. He had terrible aim, that soldier, that, that policeman. No, no, you, you, you're finished, you're gone, you're on the next world, you're not here anymore. Oh yeah? It feels like I'm here right now. And the father turns, he says, if I could only see him one more time. I would never patch him again. He's such a good boy. You promise? I would never say he's not. I would always I'd kiss him and hug him every day. You promise? He's so good. Only wanted to do good things. When was that? And I... Yankee, is that you? Maybe. It feels like me. Yankee, come over here. Don't ever do that again. I'll patch you so hard, I'll... But, Pat, Papa, you said you're not going to patch me. I was only kidding. <laughs> that was before. And the mother says, oh, you... She's crying with a towel, squeezing out the towel. I never, my little boy, my daughter, look. Hello, Mama. <laughs> Why are you squishing the towel? Because I'm crying, I, my little boy, why did it have to happen to him? It's a good thing it never happened to him. My little boy, I loved him so much, I would never, I would, I would get him anything he wants. Even a big chocolate cake? Even a big chocolate cake? I'll take one right now. 
I would give him a... You're here! No, I'm there. Except I went from there and I got here. But how did you get here if you were there? I thought he shot you. He shot me, but he thought I was up there somewhere. He hit Mr. Schlockowitz's laundry instead. Oi! Don't you ever do this again. You got me so nervous. And he looks up. And they're walking at the end of the street where the sun is coming down are all of the policemen. And the one policeman, the one that used the rifle, he has his hand in his pocket, he pulls out the chumash, and he waves to Yanki. Yanki says, bye-bye. <laughs> and the next day, suddenly his father comes running in. He says, look what I got. Papers? Papers. We're going to go down to straw. Look, I have papers. How can we fly with a paper? Maybe it's a paper airplane. No, no, these are, these are tickets. You are speeding again, Ta? No, these are tickets there to stroll. And so they gathered everything they had. The mother made 3,000 tuna fish sandwiches. And the sister made 500 peanut butter sandwiches. One on top of the other on top of the other. And Yankee ate them all up. And sure enough, the next, the next day they were on the plane, flying from the Soviet Union to Eretz Israel to keep all the mitzvahs and to learn all the Torah, to become Talmidei Chachamim, Mitzvah Shem. When Mashiach comes, we're all going there. Zoom. Thank you very much, everybody. Good to go.